Hi there everyone and welcome to the first video of 2024. I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year. I want to start the year the way I mean to continue with a testing video. Today we're going to be looking at batteries, specifically 4S packs designed for sub 250 gram flying. We've got packs from the likes of Tattoo, Dogcom, Bonker, SLS and CNHL. We're going to be seeing how they all compare and which one is going to be right for your next 4S sub 250 gram build. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. The first results we're going to look at are all to do with the energy storage of the battery. And this is measured using a constant power discharge test. This graph shows the voltage of the pack during the test. You can see that the battery starts off fully charged and is discharged all the way down to completely empty. So it starts off at 4.2 volts per cell and ends up at 3.1 volts per cell, which is when the battery is completely exhausted. The power for the discharge is calculated as the capacity of the pack in amp hours multiplied by 15C and that's multiplied by the nominal voltage of the pack which is typically 14.8 volts for a standard 4S LiPo. You can see that over the course of the test the battery discharges smoothly and the voltage falls gradually until we get down to about 14 volts and that's when the battery is getting very nearly empty and the voltage drops quite rapidly after that as the battery is completely exhausted. Before we dive into the data, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Matthias who sponsored 10 of the packs we're going to be looking at today. He paid for them, I tested them brand new and then shipped them to him and he's flying them right now. If you'd like batteries, motors or other components tested in a similar way, you can reach out to me, chris at aosrc.com and we'll set it up. The first and perhaps most obvious thing to measure with this type of test is the capacity of the pack in amp hours. This graph shows two things. It shows the rated capacity, which is what the manufacturer printed on the label, and it also shows the tested capacity, which is what the battery actually delivered in a constant power discharge test at 15C down to 3.1 volts per cell. We can see that the Tattoo R-Line 750 milliamp hour delivered the most, it's got the largest rated capacity, and it tested the highest as well. At the other end of the scale, we've got the CNHL Mini Star 550 milliamp hour, which, although it's rated at 550, only delivered about 440 in the test at 15C. Across the board, we can see that in general, most packs come out pretty close to their ratings, but some batteries deliver a little bit more than what's printed on them and some a little bit less. So you're going to want to look at the tested capacity to see how the batteries actually performed against each other. The capacity of the pack is all well and good, but it doesn't tell us everything that we need to know about the energy storage of the battery. It doesn't take into account two key things. The first is the voltage of the pack during discharge. A pack that maintains a higher voltage during discharge is going to deliver more energy for the same capacity because that voltage is higher. And it doesn't take into account the weight of the pack. It's obviously easy to make a battery that stores lots of energy if it's really, really heavy, but what we care about in terms of flight time is having a pack that stores a lot of energy for its weight. And this next chart shows both of those things because we're looking here at energy density. This chart shows you the total energy delivered by the battery over the whole test divided by its mass in grams to give you an idea of the density of the energy storage. Up at the top end, we have two packs by Dogcom, the 560 and 650 milliamp hour 150C LiPo, and we also have the SLS Knock Race 450 milliamp hour. If you're looking for the longest possible flight time, it's best to pick a battery with a large capacity that also has good energy density, so the battery is light for the amount of flight time that it's going to give you. Something like the Dogcom 650 milliamp hour is probably best if you're looking to fly for the longest possible time because it's got that larger capacity and really good energy density. At the bottom end of the chart, we have the CNHL Mini Star, the 550 and the 650 70C LiPo, and these deliver um, not very much energy for how much they weigh, anywhere from about 0.1 to 0.12 watt hours per gram. The final piece of information I want to show you from the constant power discharge test is the voltage during discharge. Here I've taken all the curves and scaled them from 0 to 100% battery capacity. And what we can see is that all the batteries start in the same place, apart from the CNHL lithium high volt which starts at a higher voltage, and they all discharge down to the same 3.1 volts per cell. But the voltage that the battery is able to maintain during the discharge varies a lot between different packs. And it can be quite difficult to read this type of graph, so I've summarized it by looking at the voltage at the 50% point, so when the battery is 50% discharged. The voltage at 50% discharge is a great measure of the quality of chemistry in a battery. 
In the ideal case, we'd like a battery that maintained 16.8 volts, if it's a 4S pack, all the way until it's completely empty and then the voltage falls off very, very rapidly. Now, that's not possible to achieve in practice, but a good chemistry will have the minimum possible voltage sag during that discharge. The better the chemistry, the less voltage sag there'll be. So looking at this chart, we can see that the tattoo and dog compacts definitely have a superior chemistry. They are maintaining a higher voltage during discharge and at 50% discharge, they are up at, well, anywhere from about 146 all the way up to 14.7 volts, doing really well. At the other end of the scale, we can see that the CNHL Mini Star, the Bonker, and the SLS Knock Race are not doing so well in terms of maintaining that voltage. We can see that they're dropping down anywhere from 14.2 to 14.4 volts, something like that. The batteries that are able to maintain a higher voltage during discharge are going to give you slightly better efficiency and more RPM at the prop, which is going to translate to more performance. Speaking about performance brings us perfectly onto the next test, which is the burst testing. Here we're looking at how much power the battery is able to deliver in a quick burst. And this is really important for how much performance you're going to get in full throttle punch outs. To measure this, I use a burst discharge test. This graph shows an example of the raw data that we get from the burst test. You can see the voltage on the battery in blue and the current in red. We start the battery fully charged and discharge it at 15C for 48 seconds. Now 15C times 48 seconds is exactly 20% of the rated battery capacity. So that brings the battery to 80% full. And the reason we do that is to condition the battery before the burst test, to allow it to warm up a little bit, to get the chemistry into the steady state that it would be in during flight. And once it's there, we hit it with the burst test where we ramp the current that we're drawing from the battery at 2C per second every second. And as you can see, the current goes up and the voltage on the pack drops down exactly as we would expect. And we keep going until the voltage on the pack has dropped below 3.3 volts per cell because we take 3.3 volts per cell as our arbitrary cutoff. And that's where we measure the power that the battery is delivering for the purposes of the burst performance. One of the interesting results that we can get from this burst testing is a comparable C rating across all the batteries. We measure the current that the battery is able to deliver at 3.3 volts per cell under load during the burst test, and we divide that current by the rated capacity of the battery to give a discharge rate. And this test method is different than the way manufacturers test C ratings, so we don't get the same numbers, but the values are comparable across all the packs, which isn't true of manufacturer C ratings because every manufacturer measures their C ratings slightly differently. What we can see is that the very best batteries from Dogcom and Tattoo can deliver more than 65C in my burst test. And the worst packs, which are the CNHL Mini Stars and the SLS Knox and the Bonker, are delivering a lot less than that, anywhere from 37 up to maybe 50C. So there is quite a big difference in the effective C rating of batteries based on which pack you choose and which manufacturer is making them. The comparable C rating between these batteries is a really interesting metric, but it doesn't take everything into account. The first problem is that it depends on the rated capacity of the pack. It depends on what the manufacturer writes on the label. If they write a smaller capacity on the label, the effective C rating will appear to be higher. The other challenge is that it doesn't take the weight of the pack into account. A great performing pack is no good if it weighs a ton. So the next chart takes those two things into consideration. This chart shows you the power density of the battery. So we take the maximum power that it's able to deliver during the burst test at 3.3 volts per cell and divide that by the weight of the pack in grams. And the Tattoo and Dogcom batteries are leading the field again here. They have power densities between eight and nine watts per gram. If we look at the other end, the CNHL Mini Stars, the SLS and the Bonker, they're coming in at, well, between four and maybe five and a half watts per gram. So that's a factor of, of nearly two difference between the best performing packs and the worst. And it is really in that power density that we see the best performing packs really stand out. 
Before we dive into the conclusions, you need to know that the latest test results are always available on AOSRC.com and they may include batteries that I've tested since making this video. So I'll put a link down in the video description to where you can find the latest test results and I'll also put links to the batteries that are the best performers from this round of testing just for your convenience. There are also links to recommended products on the battery test pages on AOSRC.com as well. All of these links are affiliate links, which means that if you want to support more independent test work like this and you don't want to pay anything, click through on the affiliate link. I'll get a very small commission from each sale, which helps support the channel and helps support the testing, and it doesn't cost you anything. So please consider using the affiliate links if you found this video useful. Now let's take a look at the summary scores. Now that we've looked at all of the factors of performance individually, it's time to bring it all together into the summary scores chart. And the way that I calculate the summary scores is by taking the performance of each pack and then dividing it by the average performance across all of the packs that I've tested. That means that 100% is going to be exactly average performance and anything below 100% is worse than average. What we can see is that overall there are some standout performers in terms of uh, particularly power delivery. The Dogcom 560 and 650 milliamp power 150C rated packs and the Tattoo R-Line 750 and 550 milliamp power 95C rated packs are the packs that I would be considering if I was looking for the best possible performance. They are really top tier. All the rest of the packs fall into a lower tier and the choice on these is going to be made, I think, based on value. If you're looking across all of these packs, a lot of them perform very similarly. I would pick the one that's going to give you the best value for money based on availability and where what price you can get them for. With the summary scores taken care of, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And there are links down in the video description to where you can find more information and where you can buy some of the best performing batteries that I've tested so far. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying. See you in the next one.